After standing silently for the better part of an hour, families made their wants known at a Muskego, Norway school district board meeting. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! They're protesting racist behavior seen at a varsity boys basketball game on March 3rd. We might have lost, but look at the kind of stuff they got on their locker room. Beloy players finding racial slurs and swastikas drawn in the dust on Muskego's guest locker room. Really? Like he didn't do that himself? Yeah, how many how many cases like this weren't perpetrated by the people that speak up about it? Oh my God. Right in, in the dust though, like. Seriously? Yeah, just scribble it in the dust. Yeah, as if, you know, like if they people really them. wanted to put those those statements on the lockers, they would use, you know, something a little more permanent. Exactly. <laughs> well, here's my thing. And this, this is what I want you guys to um, be careful about. When you act like, this is egregious. Like, this is not egregious. Some 15 and 16 year old white kids putting swastikas, draw, if they had really done this, this is nothing compared to all the shit going on in the stand. Some little kids from the stand, because this is what happened when I was in, when you, you go play a school, you might play a school in all white district or whatever, blah, blah, blah. The white kids might come to your school, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They brought, this is a black school that probably played against the white school out in the suburbs. And so what if the white kids did this? So what? Black kids are shooting and killing each other in broad daylight, killing people, getting innocent bystanders. But this is just an equal story. They've made this an equal story to all the shit going on in the state. Right. This actually has white parents in a town hall. If 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 a black, one of those black kids had shot, say one of the black kids from the black school, uh, one of the students that came to see the game and they got into it with some white kids in the stands and the black kid pulled out a gun and shot the white kid dead in the stands. There wouldn't be this much uproar there might be uproar for the the son kid, you know, because to to make sure that he didn't get treated too harshly by the justice system, to make sure that his his needs were met and his situation was considered yeah, and all that. You gotta, you gotta watch but it would barely the make the news, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't touch the, the news. Same, it would be the same story. A two minute piece. Whoa, whoa, some kid shot another kid out of basketball game. A teen. Yeah. In a random act, a teen, a random violence. Yeah. So when you cape for the white kids, like, oh, they couldn't have done that, or they wouldn't have done that. What if they did do this? So the fuck what? So what? Exactly. Use you a towel and just this. clean it off. <laughs> yeah, you can't take this. You, you're from Blackistan. You know, and these kids in high school, they know more 10, 15 kids that have been killed during their high school years, personally. What are we talking about? After standing silently for the better part of an hour, families made their wants known at a Muskego, Norway school district board meeting. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! They're protesting racist behavior seen at a varsity boys basketball game on March 3rd. We might have lost, but look at the kind of stuff they got on their locker room. Beloy players finding racial slurs and swastikas drawn in the dust on Muskego's guest locker room. Coaches and parents also telling 12 News they saw some Muskego students dressing and acting racist towards Beloit players. Chants that were said and the um, noises that were made to imply that one of the students on the team was a monkey. We have so many seniors on the team. My son is a senior as well, and that's the last um time that they are playing a high school game and they had to deal with that those same <sighs> oh my gosh please the cheerleaders be so loud in those games i don't believe it and here's and, the scene sticks and stones may break my bones but words cannot hurt me has never been less relevant than today think about her if mm. she had anything solid she would have told us listen to her statement if she had Anything that she could latch on to and concrete convey to us. They said this and they said things that. things that were said and sounds that were made. Yeah, she would have told us. There's chants that were said and the um noises that were made to imply that 
one of the students on the team was a monkey. We have so many seniors on the team. My son is a senior as well, and that's the last um, time that they are playing a high school game, and they had to deal with that. Those same parents on Monday surprised to see Muskego family standing with them in solidarity. I have to be honest. And this is why you're white. This is why white people lose every time. Because what's going to happen next? Black folk are going to start moving out here, and y'all going to have to move. Where y'all going to go to when black folks start moving to Muskego? Because this is this is right here. This is like um, a dog pissing on a um, hydrant right here. Whenever, whenever a shooting, um, a protest, a riot, that makes black people feel at home. You're going to have black people start moving into Muskego now. Yeah, we can go here and scrawl some shit into the dust in the locker room and and make a thing out of it, possibly make some money, you know. And black people and white people will kiss our asses. And they'll kiss it. Yeah, they're yeah, exactly. They're they're a they're a, a waiting subject class waiting to embrace us with open arms and and turn a blind eye to our uh, shenanigans. If I'm a white guy, if I'm a black guy and I'm looking for, and I'm and I'm getting tired of the, the Milwaukee, all the killings and all the murder in Milwaukee, I'm looking at Muskego because these white people are very, very nice. It's on Monday, surprised to see Muskego family standing with them in solidarity. I have to be honest. At first, I thought you know it would just be people just kicking under the rug, but we have so much love and support coming from some of the people in Muskego and they didn't want this f whole community to be painted the way some folks painted it at but it is once you get that racism um Monica you can never get rid of that ever that's a lifetime scar man it's like a tattoo even if you get it removed it's still like the, all that fucking mess right there when like when they remove tattoos it's still Look like somebody will see that mark and be like, oh, you had a tattoo removed? It's just you can never get rid of that at the game. I think the district response has been weak. Um, I want an actual condemnation of racist behavior in all forms. I think it's pretty. <sighs> you already know <laughs> who team she on with that damn mask on. And you never, she's never, she hasn't seen anything. She doesn't want to know if it's really happened. Uh, we did a story the other day where, um, there was a um, graffiti and swastika spray painted all over a church. You saw that yesterday? And it was some black guy from Atlanta got arrested for that. We did that story just yesterday. Pretty simple to say we condemn racism in all forms, and I haven't seen it yet. At Monday's meeting, board members ignoring their cries. As police blocked reporters and protesters from approaching. A group of protesters denied any opportunity to speak to the board either one on one or publicly at the podium. If consequences were going to be swift, they would have been done already. I think there's enough physical evidence, video evidence, that there's no need for a long, drawn out investigation. Reporting inside Bay Lane Elementary School in Muskego, I'm Caroline Reinwald, WISN 12 News. Yeah, exactly. No, we already know. Yeah, exactly. Don't no, don't look into it. No, 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 no. Don't look into it. You saw the pictures. It was written in the dust. That's all you need. What is it? Stop. No, 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 no. You don't need to investigate. Do the investigation. We're gonna see that nobody went in there except those kids that was <laughs> taking video. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what. I, yeah, I was just wondering, like, because they can't. I assume they can't have security cameras in the locker room, but right. maybe in the in the vicinity or something. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's just it's just insane, man. That like Gladys, why why, why y'all like that? That's it's like because <laughs> because of the fact that this is a news story. Like you don't, people don't understand how it's it's hardwired. Gliders are hyper responsive to messages about morality that come from prestigious institutions. That is what that is what calibrates their compass for how to behave in order to be in good standing with the right. with with power. This must be their reaction, like you know, and it's it's built it's, off the racist the the word, like just get it out right. of here. You're not racist. But, and it's built that way in order to exploit that aspect, hardwired aspect of glider psychology. It's built that way in order to create women like that, wearing the mask, displaying how good she is because she's checking off the boxes of what she was told to do, condemn racism, put a mask on your face, et cetera. 
It's just a weird, it's a hardwired thing with glide. It works for gliders when their leaders are have their best interests at heart. You know, when the society is a closed glider society, that nature works because then you can trust, you can trust the institutions to be giving you moral, you know, messages about morality that are going to get you to behave in a way that benefits, you know, that, 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 that provides an ethnocentric benefit. Mm. But when you've got this system of not only uh, of power and also of information that is up to some chicanery, the people that run these systems, what they need to know about and what they know about is human psychology and also psychology of different groups and how they're going to react when they get certain kinds of input. And this is just a hardwired thing in gliders that when institutions that are prestigious say good people behave this way and think that way, and if you don't behave this way and think that way, you're a bad person, you lose your rights, you lose your right to defend yourself, you lose your rights in court, et cetera, et cetera. There's a hardwired aspect of glider psychology that is extremely motivated by those kinds of messages. It's different for it's some, I mean, there's- need to embrace the word racist and um, use it as a term of endearment. How about that? <laughs> that might yeah, they do, but the reason, exact, yeah, no, absolutely it would. But the reason they don't do it is because that's not what they're being told to do by prestigious institutions. If Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and uh, Amazon and Disney or whatever were constantly pushing the message that gliders should do that, then they would. Wow. So it's like a, it's like a, a, a social, like it's a social, it has to be accepted all the way around, all the way up to the president. It's just that we have a, we have a radar for who is prestigious. Like if you turn on the news, national news is prestigious. The person is famous. All this, you know, the set cost a billion dollars to build. There's all these bells and whistles and stuff. Those are all signals to you to tell you that what we're telling you is important and it overrides any shit that some schlub on the street corner tells you. And so if you adhere to what we're telling you and we, you do the thing that we're telling you you have to do in order to be a good person, then that involves you in our prestige. If you fail to do that, then what the prestige tells you is that the power that's going to be against you is enormous. And gliders, gliders are built with a sense of anxiety about that, high anxiety. Yeah, I know. It's like you freak out when you hear the word race. Oh, I'm not racist. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, it, yes. And a word like racist, for example, it was never a word that was meant to describe something just neutral that got weaponized. It was always a weapon. And it was always it was always there in order to crack the whip on the glider's ass to get them into gear to do whatever they had to do to prove they weren't racist. So the system that's using it can say like, oh, this is racist, that's racist, and then they know that the glider will avoid that shit.